prepping for a barbecue this afternoon. A little bit of lunch and dinner. Took the seeds out of the poblano, poblanos. I'm gonna stuff them with queso fresco. Wrap them in foil. Prep my onion. I'm gonna wrap that in foil. Got some sweet potatoes. Wrap those in foil too. My chicken wings, I've already cut them up. They don't really need any preparation. They're gonna come sizzling hot off the grill and go into a bowl that's gonna be filled with Frank's hot sauce. No, nothing fancy with them. Comes out really good. The food is prepped. Next step is to prep the barbecue. Set it up the way we want it. Get the heat going the way we want it and the flavor the way we want it. Here's the first layer of fuel. My second layer of fuel, my first layer of fuel, of course, being uh, the charcoal briquettes. My second layer of fuel, the uh, charcoalized mesquite wood, adds to the, the heat and is definitely the secret to the flavor. I only stack up the right side. I want the hottest part of the grill to be over here. That's where I'm going to set my sweet potatoes directly over the heat, the onion and around the edges where it's not as hot i might do the uh, the barbecue wings i'm going to start probably some of them over here along with the uh, poblano peppers i might set them around the edge too and the uh, the jalapenos will start out on this side too and i'll black them up blacken them up a little bit when they're ready to come off and on this side, the side I don't build the heat on, grease builds up. So when I build my fire the next time around, I flip this tray 180 degrees and burn the grease off the other side. You can see the grease build up here. When the heat's done, this will be burned completely off and the grease will be over here. It'll make it so you don't build up a bunch of grease and have a grease fire. Yeah, you can cook that way, but it's a little more challenging, and you got to have a water bottle on hand, which I always do anyway. All right, I've got the top layer on here. My mesquite charcoalized wood gives the dynamite flavor that I'm looking for. This log was a little bit too thick, especially for this small log barbecue. I had a larger barbecue and I was doing uh, doing a lot of stuff on it. I'd have kept it intact, but sometimes you gotta break out the hammer and the screwdriver. There you go. <laughs> Throw a shout out for Milwaukee. Yeah, sometimes you gotta break out the hammer and the screwdriver and break it down and the chunks it'll fit and go with the flow of what you want your heat to be. Well, I'm not going to have to light this off for about another hour and a half. That's when I'll put on the lighter fluid and away we go.
These barbecue gloves come in real handy too. The material is real easy to wash. It's all greasy. You go inside, you just keep them on, soap them up, and wash them like you'd wash your hands. And there you go. It's better than burning your hands. Snap, crackle, pop. You always want to, if you're under an awning, kind of keep an eye on this. Gloves come in handy in case you got to close the lid and slow this burn down a little bit. Contain it. Otherwise, very enjoyable. Temperature wise, it runs fairly even. If I stacked up both sides, you'd see it closer to 500. Also, one of the reasons why I'm careful about the, the fire. I could lose the, uh, the briquettes if I wanted a little less heat. But I like the way I got it. Works for me. I already posted a presentation plate uh, on my first video with the wings. So I'm going to include a presentation plate of my uh, my last barbecue, the one I didn't record. Uh, the one with my ribeyes. I'll include that at the tail end of this because quite frankly, I prefer to eat these straight off the grill while they're still hot enough to burn you. It's just the best way to eat these uh, these chicken wings. <laughs>